good morning students since the last few weeks we have been learning in detail about asia today we are going to take up the resources of asia and their utilization asia is very rich in natural resources it has got fertile soils adequate water supply from rivers that give water for irrigation and hydro power generation it has large mineral deposits and extensive forests some of the resources are yet to be utilized because they cannot be reached easily nevertheless a lot of resources of asia has been utilized for the benefit of human beings the coniferous forests of siberia northern china and japan are rich in softwood trees softwood is used as timber and in the manufacture of paper and pulp the monsoon forests of india and southeast asia have commercially valuable timber trees such as sal and teak <coughs> bamboo a type of grass which grows abundantly in these forests is used in the construction sites for making furniture and also for making paper the equatorial rainforests of indonesia and malaysia have valuable hardwood trees like ebony mahogany and rosewood apart from forests asia is also very rich in minerals and fossil fuels it has got large deposits of a variety of minerals large deposits of iron ore occur mainly in china india and siberia Asia produces a large share of the world's tin. China, Indonesia, Myanmar, Vietnam and Malaysia are among the world's leading tin producing countries. Besides this, Asia is also very rich in mica, manganese, bauxite, uranium, nickel, gold lead zinc and copper which are considered as rare metals and they are found abundantly in different parts of asia the continent also has got vast deposits of fossil fuels China, India, Indonesia, Siberia and Kazakhstan 
are leading producers of coal. The Gulf countries, which include Saudi Arabia, Iraq, Iran, UAE, Kuwait, Oman, all are principal producers of petroleum. You can see all these black patches, which are an indication how rich the western part of Asia is in terms of production and having deposits of petroleum. Besides coal and petroleum, Asia also has got abundance of natural gas. Natural gas is produced in Siberia. Siberia has nearly 25% of the total amount of natural gas which the entire world has. Other leading producers of natural gas are Indonesia, Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan and Malaysia. Now besides mineral resources, Asia is also known for its agricultural produce. Agriculture is the most important occupation in Asia. However, the percentage of people engaged in agriculture ranges from very low in countries like Japan, Singapore and Kuwait to very high as in the Indian subcontinent, China and most of Southeast Asia. About 15% of Asia's land is cultivable. The most fertile soils occur in large river basins and the coastal plains. The steppe grasslands are also suitable for cultivation. As far as agriculture is concerned, there are different types of agriculture about which we are going to discuss now. So there are different types of agriculture and the most common type of agriculture is practiced in the densely populated regions like China and Southeast Asia. And that is intensive subsistence agriculture. Now in this type of agriculture, the farmers grow food on very small plots of land. Since it is intensive subsistence, so they grow food crops only for themselves and for their families. There is not much left to be sold outside or to be exported. The farmers use very simple techniques for growing the crops. In order to maintain the nutrition levels and to control pests, crop rotation is practiced. That is, in the same field, different types of crops are grown at different seasons. They also practice mixed cropping in which 
several types of crops are grown on the same plot at the same time it has also been found that where paddy is grown in order to supply more nutrients and more nutrition to the family members ducks are being reared in the paddy fields because the paddy fields have got a lot of water so these ducks lay eggs and that is also used by the farmers so while paddy is being grown ducks are also being reared and that provides a profit making business for the farmers at the same time it also provides them with nutrients because they can consume the ducks as well as the eggs extensive commercial agriculture now this type of agriculture is just the opposite and very different from the intensive subsistence agriculture which is practiced in southeast asia southern asia like india and china now this type of agriculture is mostly practiced in the grasslands of siberia that is parts of south western siberia and parts of central asia now unlike the farms of southern and eastern asia here the farms are very large many modern machines are being used like plows harvesters and threshers here you can see how the harvesting is being done with the help of machines the collection of the grains after threshing is also being done with the help of machines so a fully mechanized farming is practiced over here because here the farms are very large population is less and due to the sh shortage of labor the farming is mechanized the average yield of these farms are also very high and most of the yield is also being used for exporting and since population is less a large amount of the food crops can be used for exporting elsewhere we find that plantation agriculture is practiced and this type of agriculture is mainly practiced in malaysia indonesia sri lanka china and india here monoculture is practiced which means that only one type of crop is grown so the farmers are dependent only on one crop the crops like rubber tea coffee cacao oil palm are all cash crops that is crops which are chiefly meant for selling and earning money so that is why these crops are known as cash crops shifting agriculture is very common in parts of hilly and forested regions of india malaysia and indonesia it is also known as the slash and burn method of cultivation 
where a part of the forest is cleared by cutting and burning trees and the land is cultivated until the fertility of the soil gets exhausted now this practice was very common earlier now due to increase in population in most of these hilly areas there has been places where large areas have been deprived of forest so this kind of slash and burning method and shifting cultivation is now gradually being stopped so today we have learned about agriculture in detail but apart from this you must know that asia grows a wide variety of crops it grows rice in areas where there is heavy rainfall wheat millets and pulses are grown in areas which are slightly drier and has got a longer winter season in areas which has got or receives very less rainfall millets like jowar bajra and ragi are very common besides these food crops asia also grows a large number of cash crops which includes cotton jute sugarcane and oil seeds tobacco and date palm is also grown in warmer areas of asia many different kinds of oil seeds like groundnut sunflower mustard linseed sesame castor are also grown in different parts of asia besides this asia also produces a large variety of vegetables and fruits which includes bananas mangoes apples pineapples and other citrus fruits so today we have learned how important the resources of asia is and how abundance they are i hope you have enjoyed the module so that is what we have enough time for today thank you